Right, hello everyone. I am Ralph Tickmeyer, also known as Phantom Master. I was actually introduced here as being uh, related to or involved with contentmango.com. Those of you who have heard of it uh, will probably not know the investors actually pulled the plug off out of Content Mango a couple of days ago, so that is no longer. So I'm just talking on behalf of my own company, logobotics.com. Uh, topic today is uh, how cloaking 3.0, and we'll come back to that why, why it's 3.0 and 1.1 1, 1 or whatever, dominates the search engines like gangbusters. And the reason, of course, why we're going into stuff like that, that, that specific type of uh, black hat technology and uh, SEO strategy is, of course, that the quote from Humpty Dumpty makes it clear, I hope. Uh, it's a question of which is to be master, that's all. And, of course, there's an ongoing battle between webmasters and uh, search engines, and it hasn't ever stopped, no matter how much uh, effort has been put into, you know, pretending to have good relations. So, uh, who's talking? That's myself, hopefully fairly recognizable. I was um, first involved in, in academics and um, studying comparative literature and some linguistics, and, and later on I discovered the Internet, and I discovered what a fine and fun market the Internet could be, and uh, then I was hooked, and from 1999 when I uh, founded my company phantommaster.com, which does not exist any longer. Uh, we were servicing uh, the industry with uh, SEO software mainly and also uh, services. Okay, uh, here's a list, short list, just a select list of some clients uh, I've been working for or we have been working for. Hold on, what's that? And um, that's uh, just to give you an indication that we're not just uh, um, talking about fly-by-night outfits or, or more or less uh, non-competitive uh, levels. What's cloaking 3.0? Cloaking, of course, is just a vernacular term. It's uh, not the really, really correct one. Uh, the correct one is uh, sh should actually be cloaking as IP delivery because uh, what does it do? Cloaking works by a fairly simplistic technology, really. Uh, on a cloaked web page, special software, I'll come to that later, will analyze the incoming traffic and find out is this a search engine spider? If it is a search engine spider, it will be uh, sent to a cloaked page or cloaked site, whatever. Or is it human? Or non search engine spiders? Because, of course, there's other spiders as well, like. Um, you know, when your competitors check your sites for uh, um, incoming links, but also for their structure or keyword density and this, that, and the other, or their spam spiders that will try to, you know, harvest email addresses from your site and whatever. All these are not search engine crawlers, and uh, thus they are being treated as normal humans that they they will unfortunately end up on your normal landing pages. But uh, there's a reason for that, because the cloaked pages are really for the search engine spiders or crawlers only. They're pure spider fodder. And all this is determined by the visitor's IP address. There's a possibility of doing it by user agent only. That is generally called poor man's cloaking, and it's strongly advised against because that is actually detectable. It's quite easy. All you change is your browser's user agent, and uh, then suddenly, bam, if you do it right, you know, you'll, you'll see the cloaked page in all its glory. Uh, there are still people around doing this, and um, but that's not what I'm talking about here. What I'm talking about here is really what I term industrial strength cloaking. And for that, of course, you need uh, a very comprehensive and reliable uh, database of uh, search engine spiders' IPs in the first place. Otherwise, it's useless. It wouldn't work. So, in a nutshell, the search engines are shown a different content from human visitors. Pure spider fodder, as I said. Meaning that this is a bit of a problem if you have clients as a cloaker because, you know, getting your client to understand that the pages you are actually building for them are invisible to them, they don't like that. 
What do you mean we can't see what you've done? Yeah, we sure. I mean, we could download it, we can send it to you by email <laughs> or whatever, and then you'll see a page full of gibberish, which is actually only optimized for search engine spiders. But when you actually click that page in the SERPs, you know, you'll land, you're a human, right? You're not a search engine spider, so you'll actually land on, on that uh, target page you, you yourself specified. So the pages remain invisible for you. That's what cloaking works. If it doesn't work because you're doing it wrong, for example, you're not using a, um, an IP delivery um, uh, specifi specified uh, database of uh, search engine spiders, then yeah, then your competitors can find it out, right? But if, it, if done properly, there's no way this will happen. Now guess what? The search engines and cloaking, they don't like it. They don't like it one bit. Why? Because they want to have the full control over their index. That's nothing new. This has been going on for ages now, and uh, this is not about 3.0 yet. But um, the search engines want to have full control over their index. On the other hand, and that's where the paradox comes in, the index the search engines build are made of the stuff you, yourself, as webmasters, actually put in up there in the first place. So it's not the search engines who create the content, it is you, the webmasters, who do. And because of that, so do we. We want that control as well. And, and cloaking actually gives us back that control, at least to a, to a great degree. Because uh, in that way we can uh, actually um, uh, make the search engines show what we want them to show and not the other way around, if we do it right. Okay, now, well, some of you may say, wait a minute, I thought cloaking was dead. Because that's actually been around for quite a while. I mean, I've been around for quite a while, <laughs> and uh, so sometimes when, uh, when people hit upon me with whom I've had you know, conversations like 10 years ago or so, uh, they'll ask me, hey, are you still into cloaking? I thought cloaking was begone, done with. And yeah, okay, it's uh, called propaganda. Guess who's behind it? And it's not just the search engines, mind you. It's a lot of white hats who are uncomfortable with being outdone by cloakers, of course. Hmm? As I always say, a good black hat will out white hat a white hat any time. Because black hat isn't about being black and bad or something or, or uh, clandestine. It's, it's about being as effective as possible and using as much automation as possible uh, for more profits. And so cloaking in truth is about as dead as search engine market optimization. Haven't we heard that one before? You know, like every other five, six months comes a new article. Is this the end of SEO? SEO is dead, blah, 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 blah. We've heard it all so many times. Uh, it's not really that funny anymore. It's as dead as search engine marketing, sure, or search marketing in general, or as dead as internet commerce. So basically it means it doesn't even smell funny. It's, it's not dead at all. But, okay, as long as lots of people believe it, it's good for you if you use it, if you actually go for cloaking, because why? You have less competitors to contend with. If they all think that cloaking is dead and are not going for it and you're using it to your advantage, so much the better. But uh, seriously speaking, cloaking 3.0 is alive and kicking and uh, IP delivery sites dominate the SERPs as I call it like gangbusters and for years and it's never actually sp stopped. Uh, it was just a, a fairly stupid rumor and uh, as I said, propaganda by the search engines as well, claiming that they can detect cloak size, blah, 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 and uh, actually doing something against it. Okay, so why is cloaking that powerful as I'm bragging here? And uh, there's a lot of reasons. I'll only give you a few because my time here is limited. One of the reasons why cloaking really is powerful, and I'll show you a case study later on as an example of what cloaking can actually do. So. I'll actually back up that claim, uh, it's, it's versatility. It can be adjusted to any niche, to any market, to any location, and that in includes extreme government censorship scenarios, such as the Great Firewall of China. We have a uh, uh, service in place called the SEO Fire Dragon, 
and that is on solely about defeating the Great Firewall of China, which is extremely lucrative, for example, in the gambling market. Chinese are really crazy about gambling. Their government in China doesn't allow them to do online, go for online gambling. They'll block these sites. And uh, what we do is uh, we'll block their blockers, as it were, or rather we outdo their, their um, censorship. And that just, that's not just about gambling or e-commerce. I mean, that's also, for example, important for political dissidents. It's important for people who criticize their government or, or um, could you get that pop-up away? We thank you. Uh, and um, so uh, you might actually say, us cloakers, right? We are the torch bearers of democracy and free speech in the world. And what do people like Matt Cutts of Google do instead? What does Google do for pre free speech in China? Nothing. Okay. <laughs> That's not about money so much. It's just showing you that there's more to it than uh, than just pure commerce. Brute force optimization is another reason why main why uh, cloaking is so uh, effective and powerful. Why do I call it brute force? Because via automation, you can actually. And we're talking of on-site factors at the moment now, only solely uh, on-site uh, optimization. Uh, you can actually create a slew of different approaches. Let's say you're targeting one keyword like online casinos. Uh, you, you generate, let's say, 100 cloaked domains, what we call shadow domains, which are only visible where the church and spiders will be kept, but humans will be redirected to your landing pages. Uh, for that single keyword, for example, you could generate 150,000 different pages. Uh, as I said, we're talking of on-site optimization only now at the moment. Uh, you know, with different keyword ways, placement, uh, with graphics, without graphics, with RSS feeds, without RSS feeds, uh, keyword embedded there, keyword embedded there, blah, blah, blah. Meaning you could have a scenario where you have 100,000 different uh, um, variants for that single page and to, to see which one performs best or maybe a lot of them will perform best because one other thing cloaking always uh, it does really uh, because of the way the content is generated it usually integrates the long tail without specifically telling it to so that's uh, a hell of a powerful uh, bit as well. So you can also uh, you know, go for uh, PR sculpting on site. You can work with uh, integration of RSS feeds. And that's just a few of uh, very many other um, aspects, like you know, uh, graphics integration. Uh, be it that you put the keywords in a certain way in your title tags or uh, into your alt tags and so on. A lot of this is really old stuff. But do it automated, do it uh, you know, automatically on, let's say, 100,000 pages. Or let's say you, you, you roll out 1,000 domains with 1,000 pages each. I mean, you're talking millions here. You, don't, you, you really don't want to do that manually. You couldn't probably, and uh, you, know, you'd, you'd, you or your web developers would uh, you know, fall down dead with boredom after, after a while. Uh, and, and what I'm talking about is stuff which the proper tools will generate f for you in less than an hour. So uh, do the math. I mean, that's, uh, that's why I call it brute force, okay? Uh, the automation as such is, uh, of course, a good thing. It has to be employed in an intelligent manner. But uh, if you do that, then you have really an unprecedented uh, uh, degree of flexibility and you can embed a lot of you know some semantic cloud uh, some semantic cloud material uh, by the in the way again the content is generated usually content is scraped and it is that in order to avoid copyright issues and co uh, duplicate content issues it is jumbled up it's mixed up scraped from all sorts of sources jumbled up it is sanitized uh, for example, when I developed uh, this, this uh, tool, the Shadow Maker, I had the, um, the pleasure of researching. I did that manually for about two months, uh, researching to get uh, what was prob arguably the world's largest 
database of smart words and, and swearing phrases and stuff. Because of course, you know, when you're uh, when when you want online casinos as you rank for rank for that, you don't probably don't want to rank for online casinos suck. So you have to have a negative list of uh, of stuff you want to uh, not have on your sites. Just like you would ordinarily try for in White Hat SEO as well, you wouldn't, you wouldn't really want that kind of uh, combination, kind of a negative long tail, as it were. So uh, all that can can be automated, and uh, of course, what it amounts to is scalability. I've just talked about it. I just mentioned, you know, taking something like a thousand domains and rolling them out. In some markets, you will have to have that. If you're uh, in a highly competitive uh, market uh, like, for example, online gambling or even online finance or where there's lots of regulations in place and depends on the jurisdiction you're working in, of course, that's another story. But, uh, you know, uh, uh, or, or even when you're tackling the Chinese uh, Great Firewall, uh, then you might, we're really talking about rolling out domains not in the tens, not in the scores, but in the hundreds, if not thousands and sometimes even in the tens of thousands. It's a question of ROI, whether it pays off or not. I mean, uh, everything else is unimportant if, uh, uh, as long as you turn a profit, and uh, uh, scalability is only enabled by this degree of um, automation. And, and uh, so what it actually leads to is that it enforces the, the attitude of mass makes class, you know, do it often enough, massively enough, uh, uh, and intelligently enough, of course, uh, and uh, you will actually create a new class of, uh, of uh, search quality. Uh, again, always limited by your ROI, meaning your margin, how much of a profit it actually uh, makes for you, and uh, whether the effort invested is actually uh, worth your while plus invulnerability. Now that's a very important point because that's what you hear even to this day in all sorts of white hat discussions, uh, conversations, forums and whatever. Uh, and they'll tell you, well, you know what, cloaking will get you banned. Well, it won't if you do it properly. Okay, so again, online casinos. You have this wonderful website, this money-making website, your money site, right, on online casinos where you you know, really convert like crazy and so on, but you want more, of course. And <laughs> so, uh, so what do you do? No, we're not going to cloak for you and pump your traffic to that site because if that connection is detected by the search engine, yes, you may actually get indexed. You don't want that to happen. No, it's quite simple. We take your your money site and we clone it. Make a clone of it. Yes, complete clone, 100%. You know, you, you might want to change the name maybe or a bit of a logo or whatever in case your competitors get pissed off, as they will. And um, so it's not really, you know, clear that this is a clone of your site, but else nothing, nothing needs to be changed. That clone site gets hosted on a different server way away. We can do that for you or you can do it yourself. It depends on who does it and who is responsible. But that's important that the search engines are kept out of that, meaning that you don't even want that clone site to get spidered or let alone indexed. Why not? Because we want to avoid content, duplicate content issues, right? So basically that clone site, which will be your new target or your new yeah, cloaking target site, will be kept in isolation there and it won't even be indexed. So it can't be ED indexed later on either as a penalization, of course. And now when you set up your shadow domains, your cloaked domains, and you pump uh, and you dominate the SERPs, and I'll be talking about that in a minute, um, and you'll, you'll be grabbing all that traffic and pumping it, that relevant traffic, because it's an organic search traffic after all, uh, and you'll be, pump, you'll be pumping all that traffic to that cloned site, and that's where the business happens. So now you have two operations in place. You have that wonderful online casino site we talked about, it's white hat stuff, pure squeaky clean, come on mad cuts, love me. And you're actually making a lot of money in a totally deniable way on the side, in shadow, in the shadows, right, with your cloaked setup, where, where, you, where you actually uh, pump all that other stuff uh, to and uh, and your competitors won't be the wise and neither will be the search engine because there's no connection between the two, right? Yeah, you are the connection, of course, but 
uh, that of course is something uh, you have to take care of. What does it happen? What, what does it actually um, enable you to do? It, it goes, you go for surf saturation. Don't be humble. Don't, you know, be happy when you actually achieve ranking number, position number three or number one on page one. Uh, when I take on clients for, uh, for um, cloaking campaigns, we will always target 70% plus sub uh, saturation on pages one through three. Meaning out of 30 results, we want 70% to be ours. On different cloaked sites, of course. Is it achievable? You bet. It's just a question of the resources you, uh, you throw at it and, of course, the know-how of doing it. So imagine when you have a page one for, for online casinos where one of your sites, not, maybe not your money site anymore, because it will probably not perform as well as the cloaked stuff. Uh, page one, p positions one, two, three are yours. Four, or five, no, no, not really, but six, seven, eight, nine, and ten are yours as well. No matter where people click, they will always you know, f be ending up on one of your target pages. And then repeat that on page two and maybe on page three as well. That's when you are really talking, that's when you're really talking business. I had a client once who uh, rang me up, in totally you know, excited, uh, almost had a heart attack. He woke up that morning and um, he was uh, dominating positions one through 64, except for two, two positions of that in, uh, all, overnight for a fairly competitive term, and uh, why was he so excited and, and near a heart attack? Because then, of course, came greed. Said, what if I lose that? I said, you dumbo, enjoy it, hey, make money. And uh, with, that, with that single campaign, he made something like $90,000 a month uh, net profit alone. Did it last? No, it did not last because he didn't uh, know how to. It was something he had done himself, a client of our software. And but anyway, he taught him a lesson. <laughs> it is actually doable. And um, will people notice? Of course they will. So you better hide your tracks. But but what I'm saying is that uh, you can actually achieve that. So in summary, again, versatility, Bruce Ford, force optimization, automation, scalability, invulnerability, and self-saturation, uh, they all add up to it. And that's why I keep saying that search, that uh, cloaking is uh, the most powerful SEO technology extent out there in extremely competitive and or restrictive markets. Because there's some things cloaking cannot do for you. For example, it won't push your money sites ranking what, because you want to protect them. So uh, what you actually do is you push that, for example, that clone site. And then uh, what's actually ranking will be the shadow domains and uh, uh, who are pushing all that search engine traffic to your target pages. Um, it won't enhance your branding, of course not. That's not what it's for. And, and actually, that's not how branding works in the first place. It won't probably improve your business reputation because your competitors will probably hate you. They will hate being totally helpless against what you're doing. And yes, yeah, th thank you for asking. No, they cannot detect it. Not if it's done properly. It also won't give you bragging rights because uh, it's not in any way legal. Yeah, that is American usage when Google representatives, for instance, tell you well, it's, it's illegal and all they mean it's against their own terms of service. Yes, that may be, but not illegal in the legal sense, right? They are not the law of the land, not yet. And uh, but you still don't want to brag about it because uh, your competitors, again, they, they will try whatever they can <laughs> you know, to, to, to bump you off, off uh, if, the, if possible. And so uh, what I say is uh, shut up and make more money instead, okay? It won't get you a hug from Ad Cuts, I'm afraid. But uh, we're working on that. Okay, cloaking also may not be for you if you are working in a non-competitive space. Could be an overkill, you know, like I say, like using a f sledgehammer to crack a nut. You know, if you're making good, decent money by 
uh, by selling uh, teakwood chopsticks, for instance. I'm just making this up now, but I don't know whether maybe that's a huge market. I don't, I don't really think so. And all you have is three competitors of five. You know, if you're a mom and pop site which uh, works a low level, but maybe lucrative, but low level, uh, not highly, not very competitive kind of uh, setup, then cloaking may not be for you because uh, if you're doing fine with white hat, hey, go ahead. I have no problem with that, no beef with that. The only reason I went into black hat was because I found out it's so much more powerful than white hat as a rule. Also, I'm not saying it's either or. In the example I've given you is that you have one white hat setup, squeaky clean and whatever, and then you have the black hat setup which makes you the real profit. Uh, what's wrong with that? In my view, nothing. Uh, if you can't well afford it, that's of course depends on ROI. I mean, it's uh, whether it's cheap or expensive uh, depends on your return on investment, on the, on the profit, on your margins, and, and the amount of sales you make. It's also not for you if your reputation is more important than your ROI. Again, it's not about branding or PR, right? I mean. Uh, um, I wouldn't advise Coca-Cola to go for cloaking, for instance, because they don't sell any stuff online. And uh, branding, will, cloaking doesn't do squat for their branding. So uh, it will be a total waste of money for them. Not that they're asking, but okay. And if you can't bear the heat, and that's important too, because I mean, to a great extent, this applies to white hat SEO uh, as well. I mean, I'm. Uh, I haven't checked, but I suppose that a lot of people here, when you heard Dan's uh, excellent uh, presentation, were probably not quite aware of all these super fancy new tools coming out or whatever. Uh, new tools are coming out all the time. Why? Because they're required. Because it's, flu it's flux, it's uh, ever-changing ground. And, uh, but in Black Hat SEO, because it's so far more, more aggressive and uh, this is even, you know, uh, escalated even more. So, so that's not everybody's lifestyle, you know, like living, w w working up, uh, waking up one morning and seeing, oh, out of my 600 cloaked domains, 400 have been killed. What do I do now? Well, a, bl a real Black Hat, of course, would say, okay, so I lost 400, so I'll roll out uh, 800 new ones. But of course that has to be in place, pro perfectly automated. And not, you know, just get a heart attack. Oh, well, we're going to pay for my ki kid's college education or whatever now. You know, I mean, that, that is uh, not really the way to go. So uh, if you like a good, good night's sleep and don't have nerves of steel, then maybe cloaking is not for you. And also, of course, it's not for you. You still so want that hug from Matt Cutts. Well, it's quite simple because all you just do is you don't tell him, huh? Okay. Uh, cheat on him. <laughs> I'm all for it. So, what do we do? Uh, Got to rush this a bit because time's running out. So, um, the basic mo mechanics of cloaking are, as I said, quite simple in a way. For one thing, you need a reliable spy spider database. Should be comprehensive and always up to date. And uh, the search engine spider IPs should be verified. And that's a job which can really only be done manually. I know what I'm talking about. I invented this thing called uh, the Phantom Mouse Spider Spy um, service, which has been running since 1999. It's a different name now. It's IP Grabber now. But it's been running since 1999 and 24-7, uh, right? Uh, and every single spider in there has been verified manually, which is a very complex and, and, and time-consuming uh, process because there's no other reliable uh, way to do it. You can get you know, automation in place to get signals and to check for spider IPs, of course, that everything uh, of that kind is being done. But uh, the actual verification uh, requires manual uh, analysis. And then you need a traffic switch. This is an on-site software. As I said, that checks the incoming traffic and says, oh, this is a search engine spider, legit search engine spider. Okay, we'll keep him on this page or send him to a cloaked page or whatever. No, this is a human. Humans will be redirected to wherever you say. And if you have the proper software, you know, can say, well, online casinos UK, redirect them to that landing page. Online casinos USA, direct, redirect them to that other page. This is done on server level immediately, so you know, there's no JavaScript or click here uh, stuff in place. 
Uh, then you will, uh, of course, need to have those cloaking pages created, and uh, or the shadow domains. You need a site page or site or page generator as a piece of software, offline, uh, off-site software that, uh, depending on the degree of sophistication you it, it offers, includes content generation, uh, on-site link building or link sculpting, RSS feeds, keyword optimization, uh, drip feed technology. Drip feed is important, you know, like if you have 100 domains out there, they're ranking well, well, you want to put up new content there, but you want to make it look as organic as possible, so if you have a drip feed script in place, you know, say, on this domain, we'll put up two new pages per week, but randomly, you know, so that it won't always be on the same day, same hour. On that other other site, we will do one st strictly, you know, one new article per day, and it's or well, per, per week, and it'll always be a Sunday at 11. Stuff like that. Uh, other stuff like uh, site structures, like page names or, or extensions, it could be uh, uh, APX, it could be um, HTM, HTML, and, s and things like that, you know, to make, as I said, to create as little footprint as you can so that uh, they won't be detectable for, uh, by the search engines. And um, so all that, you need a tool for that, and, uh, or, or several tools. And then, of course, there's off-site SEO, which is not the, uh, the topic I'm covering here, because that is something that has to be done externally, you know, like link building, pinging uh, aggregators, uh, um, creating social media buzz, or uh, attrition compensation, whatever I mean by that. Attrition means, uh, in this context, then the, uh, the amount of sites you will actually be losing because they get detected or whatever. Uh, so you have to compensate that, meaning roll out fresh ones, and it's an old black hat uh, adage that uh, for every one site you lose, you roll out ten new ones, and then do the math. I mean, uh, if that happens, if you lose a thousand pages, a thousand sites, and for every one you create a th uh, ten new ones, you know, it goes up and up and up. From a certain point uh, on, uh, neither the Great Firewall of China will be able to cope with your automation, nor will uh, the super-duper um, heavy-duty um, electronic systems of Google or Bing or wherever, whoever. So it's uh, so you'll have still have to do your link building. It has to be very aggressive, and but again, I cannot cover that topic here. Now I'm just giving you now some illustrative screenshots to show you uh, what uh, a good tool uh, will actually allow you to do when you build your your um, your uh, content. Your your um hmm, doesn't. No, that's a bad tool, obviously. Okay. <laughs> uh, <coughs> you have, uh, for example, um, you can uh, use different versions of. How much? How long do I, do I have? Okay, fine. Okay, we'll do. Um, like uh, using uh, uh, keyword files in C CSV format, or uh, uh, you want to use an identical number of keywords for all your domains, or not. You want to randomize things. Uh, <coughs> you want to define the range of randomization uh, or select uh, randomly from a keyword file. Um, you might have um, uh, stuff to, uh, to define like uh, the content links, the whether you want to have random insertion in every so and so many or nth page or uh, uh, I won't go through all these, uh, these um, items now. It's just to give you an indication of how varied your setup it could, can be and actually should be if you're really scaling this up, if you're not just you know, working with two or three cloak pages, but rather you know, with uh, dozens if not scores or hundreds of shadow domains and even thousands. Um, the amount of images per page you want integrated, if you have an image database, that's important because, of course, spiders will look at pages these days, and if it's only, pa only text and nothing else, and that's, uh, that's a dead giveaway. But if they find some, some images in there and it looks like an ordinary page, then that's how they will index and uh, well, crawl and index it, and uh, that's what you want to see. Or uh, you want uh, to use a 
centra centralized the keyword switch file, you might want to add innocuous, you know, links going out so that again that it looks more organic, like to Wikipedia, which Google loves so much. Or um, you want to define whether your redirects go to a 403 or 404 uh, error page. Uh, you want to use a negative uh, keyword list or not. If you're into porn, you probably want, don't want to exclude the negative list. Uh, <laughs> but um, that depends again on, on what your campaign is about. Um, You'll have uh, link networks you might want to include. You want to use a random order of uh, doing it. Or file types, as mentioned before uh, here. Uh, you know, uh, so that, let's say, on one, one, one uh, domain you have only PHP files, on another you have only uh, SHTML or whatever. Uh, so so that now there's not all one site, one site fits all kind of uh, template uh, you'll be using. And, um, so uh, <coughs> this is, uh, this uh, geotargeting is a possibility. Uh, the drip feed can be uh, or should be able. You should be able to actually uh, uh, define that uh, how fast and where and what and so on. So that is why it's called cloaking 3.0 and not cloaking one point something. You know and. Uh, so it, really, it has really developed, and as has all SEO, of course. And um, so finally, a case study on Online Casino UK. That was uh, something we did last month. Uh, you don't have to read all this boring, uh, boring stuff. Oh, I'm telling you about this, this mark, what's marked yellow. These are the page one rankings with Google. That's all. So everything else is page two or further. but. Uh, uh, this is, as I said, one single campaign was achieved after about uh, two weeks work, yeah, two weeks uh, after rolling out. That's when these kind of uh, results were, were finally achieved. Oops. Um, this goes on a bit, as you can see. This is just for one month. Of course, it's one month in aggregate, so, so there's fluctuation there. That's, uh, not uh, visible directly from from the from the list as is, but what you can see is uh, this is actually even some serious you know um, competitive keywords you know like uh, uh, casino non deposit position one casino online casino position one best online casino PayPal uh, position one uh, whether it converts again depends on of course uh, how you handle the traffic once it arrives that's that's when cloaking stops and that's where marketing or, s or selling um, commences again. So uh, w I think this gives you a little indication of what I mean by search, satura sur search saturation, that you actually uh, you know, manage to corner a lot of the, uh, the market there. And uh, in one of our first cartoons, um, it said that a cloaked black hat will appear to be white, so that may lead to some interesting questions what we make of white hats in the first place. Okay, uh, cloaking resources, I think this will be published as far as I know, so you can look this up, I don't have to, uh, to, have to uh, go through the, all this because time is run, uh, has run out, but there's a uh, link for an exclusive 5% um, discount if you want that. Um, and well, anyway, if you have any further questions, feel free to ask after the conference or when, when when there's just during the uh, question and a we will ask the questions even better yeah okay uh, all right so uh, thank you for your attention and uh, see you soon